AQ's Blog and Grill. Welcome to AQ's Blog and Grill. Fast food for thought in branding and entrepreneurship. Today's guest is Glenn Drummond. Glenn is the uh, Chief Innovation Officer at Quarry Integrated Communications. Welcome, Glenn. Thank you, Alan. Everybody talks about customer experience and, and branding, but no one seems to be doing anything about it. One of the ways to look at the customer experience movement is that it's a, a fancy name for a price war in disguise. Think about this. If we take the average customer and we ask the average customer across any industry what they want, and you know, we're going to get uh, you know, pretty much a reflection of what the industry has been telling itself all along, that you know, people want cars that drive faster and have bigger engines or whatever, right? Uh, but of course, if everybody invests their time and energy in optimizing the experience for the average customer, what we have is an undifferentiated group of businesses competing with each other on similar terms and then the customer is in the situation of saying, well, among these very common choices, um, which one has the lowest price? Right. So kind so, of a red ocean situation. Right. Okay. So, I mean, Clay Christensen, you know, opens his book on the innovator's dilemma by saying, you know, can great companies fail by listening to customers? And he answers in the same paragraph, yes, they can. And then he takes a book to prove it. You can't compete successfully in building a strong brand through customer experience unless you have a distinctive and proprietary view of what are the differences between customers that make a difference. Between customers that make a difference. Right. Interesting. So how does that then help us or maybe even be an obstacle uh, to moving forward on uh, customer segmentation or uh, market segmentation? Right. So one of the things that is a popular misconception in uh, marketing and business generally is that segments are naturally occurring phenomena. That they exist as a reality independent of our strategic view. So if you are the overwhelming market leader, then you have a big share of market that you need to defend. And chances are that share of market spans many different kinds of customers across the marketplace. So what's your goal with segmentation? you want to find out what are the different groups of customers so you can serve different customers differently so that you can defend that market share. But if you're a challenger and you have a relatively small market share and you're looking at that same market, you want to find difference inside those segments and zero in on the most profitable customers who are be being treated uh, okay, mm -hmm. but you know, in a kind of an average sort of way. Right. And what you want to do is say, you know, the market leader missed some really important distinction between these people and the other people in that segment of theirs. Okay. So if it's true that, you know, these two uh, points of view exist, and it's hard to argue against that logic, then segments can't be a naturally occurring phenomena. Segments are a product of your strategic perspective. Hmm. Supposing uh, a new competitor has entered your market with a disruptive technology, uh, that could be a signal for a change in perspective. Right. So, you know, changes that take place in the marketplace could be a signal to say, hey, we need to change our segmentation. segmentation. Um, in general, those organizations that are uh, leading markets are driving the maturation of markets. Wow. Excellent. So. One of the things I did hear uh, in, your, in your explanation there was um, maybe share of market is not the only thing a strategy should be addressing. Share of wallet or where are the profitable customers residing that aren't being, uh, not having all of their needs met. Let's talk about then the, the buying journey mm -hmm. because I think in the past it, it was very much about the unique selling proposition mm -hmm. and uh, you know we need to find the unique feature mm -hmm. uh, that we have that the competition doesn't. I'm not sure that works anymore and I'm not sure that it's so much about sales as it is about buying. W yeah. What's your reaction to yeah. that? We have this incredibly objectified language about targets. How, how do you feel being a target today, Alan? Uh, and yet, you know, it's the most natural thing in the world for right. us to think about targeting customers. And we have this idea about 
segments. And again, this is a, a very objective way of viewing the world. And the customer buying journey, the language about you know, buyer-centric marketing right. as opposed to seller-centric marketing is the reality that inbound channels are more powerful than outbound channels. Mm -hmm. The purpose of outbound channels today, uh, as Bob Greenberg put it, is to accelerate traffic to your inbound channels. Right. And if you, um, if you start to think about inbound channels and their influence, uh, the zero moment of truth idea you know, Google's research is publishing that, you know, 70% or 57%, however you add it up, uh, depending on business versus consumer, right. of the buying journey is completed before the customer contacts the sales channel. Right. So the whole notion of distribution channel and the role of the distribution channel has been re-scripted by an empowered customer who makes their own choices and does what they want to do. Right. That, that narrow casting, as opposed to the broadcasting, seems to be where our industry in communications is going. Right. Now, and if we bring this back full circle to the question of customer experience and segmentation, if you're building these inbound channels, now you have to have a computer that has been trained, a server that's been trained to read subtle differences in behavior and signals and make the right kind of choices uh, in order to make that customer experience feel like it was designed just for that person who's right. there. Segmentation is a process of building a model of reality that is simple enough to get your hands on. Simple enough. You know Einstein's thing, you know, it needs to be simple enough but not too simple. Right. And so generally speaking, what needs to take place is inside segments, there needs to be another kind of characterization of customers that is not based on a principle of absolute separation one from the other, but on a basis of a cluster of factors that unite a group of people. So once you're inside a segment, which is a really broad category, and I say again, I say, this is the digital thing, right. inside that is this analog phenomena of you know, a much richer characterization of what are the common factors that create kind of archetypal customers uh, that you'll recognize them by this characterization, mm -hmm. your sales channel can recognize them, they can recognize themselves in the kinds of experiences you lay out for them in your inbound channels and your retail concepts and so on. So when, you, when we're talking about personas, there's probably a very simple way of thinking you're doing a persona. Mm -hmm. And there's probably a deeper way. Yeah. And, and really, if I'm a client, what do I want to invest in? Think about uh, persona as being a, uh, a delivery medium plus content. The delivery medium is a narrative form of representation. And if we really think about what makes human beings tick, we are hired, wired for narrative right. uh, in the very structure of our consciousness. So we have here with personas a tremendous delivery medium for content. Now we just have to decide what that content is. Right. Do you want to reinforce existing industry biases that are the kinds of things that you know, leave people in the innovator's dilemma? Or do you want to inject in that process you know, the wholesome new good stuff that's actually giving you some sort of differentiating and proprietary insight that is different and you know, qualitatively better uh, than you know, the, the standard fare? So, so knowing knowing the audience, knowing the, the customers inside those, those segments and having some idea of what tensions and, and motivations are at play, we can influence behavior um, in, in a more positive and a, and a cost-effective way, I guess. Well, 80% of product innovation, uh, or 80% of innovation dollars go to product. The real home runs come in changing things like the business model changing things like the customer experience, changing other dimensions of the overall fabric of this total customer value proposition. Right. So what do you think then in going into the future? Um, young people looking for careers in what used to be called marketing, communications, branding. Um, what kind of things should they be studying? What sort of things should they be striving to understand? Here are some things that I think are going to be very important. Um, a, an ease with quantitative 
information because there is so much more quantitative information coming back from digital signal. Okay. That's going to be more important in the future and it's going to be needed across a wider number of people. Copywriters are going to need to be pretty good at math because mm -hmm. of the understanding of arguments about search engine optimization and you know their ability not only to follow good advice about that but also when an argument is not very well grounded they need to be able to push back appropriately. Right. So, so there's that. But the other thing that I think is going to be very, very important is we are, we are just on the precipice here of an era where we are going to have people watching computers watching people. Yes. And if the people watching the computers take as read that this bar graph, because it's a bar graph and it's screaming this direction right. versus that direction. Um, if they aren't capable of the kind of deconstructive, critical thinking to say, no, wait a minute, somebody invented the axes of that bar graph. Somebody constellated this to say what we really need to pay attention to is the relationship of this to that, whereas you know, there's a third dimension missing, or maybe these are the wrong dimensions altogether. Mm -hmm. That kind of critical thinking um, you know, that's going to be more important than ever because this data that's going to be coming out of our marketing dashboards um, is going to be beautifully presented. It's going to be incredibly compelling, and it might be simply reinforcing bad theory right. and bad models that haven't been interrogated properly. Interesting. So, Glenn, it's, it's been great chatting to you today. Yeah, here's to that. All right. Thanks, Glenn. Thanks very much, everyone, for dropping into AQ's Blog and Grill. We had a great time with uh, Glenn Drummond, Chief Innovation Officer of Quarry Integrated Communications today. And if you would like to ask Glenn some follow-up questions, we'll make sure that uh, Glenn gets those questions, and we'll make sure he answers them, too. So thanks very much, everyone. Stay tuned for our next segment. AQ's Blog and Grill.